Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here, critiquing subscriber mixes, episode 30. So before we dive into this group of mixes submitted by subscribers, I just wanna let you know that this is the best time in history to be a rock or metal musician. And this comes down to the fact that we have these amazing tools called MIDI drums and amp sims. The issue is so many people make the same mistakes over and over and over again when using these tools. And this is why I put together my MIDI drums and amp sims production checklist to highlight these mistakes so you can avoid making these mistakes and get right to achieving better sounding productions with the MIDI drums and amp sims you're currently using. The MIDI drums and amp sims PDF guide is absolutely free right now and you can have direct access by clicking the link below in this video's description. So with that out of the way, let's dive into this group of mixes submitted by my loyal email subscribers. And our first mix here comes from Alan. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, Alan, I really dig what I'm hearing. Um, to be honest with you, it does sound pretty lo-fi, but to me, almost in a cool way, like in a retro black metal production uh, kind of way. I don't know if that's your intent, that's the way it's coming across, but I kind of dig it, to be honest with you. The one thing that's really refreshing to me uh, when listening to this is that the production sounds very natural. It doesn't sound programmed. It sounds like real musicians actually playing together. So you score points, in my opinion, in that department. My main note here would be the guitars are really loud and the piano and the orchestration or whatever's happening on top of the drums is really loud. So the drums sound very buried. And I don't think this is an EQ thing. There's no magical mix fix or mix trick that's gonna get you to where you wanna be if you're looking for a clearer mix. I would say simply, Turn up your snare drum, turn up your drums in general, and turn everything else down. Maybe you're the guitar player. As guitar players, we're usually guilty of making our guitar tracks way too loud. Um, but yeah, I would say turning your guitars down and the extra instrumentation and the piano down a little as well, it doesn't have to be as loud as it is, will help clear up your mix. Thank you so much for your submission, and I cannot wait to hear your future work. All right, our next mix here comes from Mike. <laughs> So the first thing I wanna say is the mix sounds cool, but super squashed. I mean, if that's the sound you're going for and you want that very limited kind of sound, stick with it. But I do notice that, that there's almost no wiggle room uh, at the top of the meter. But anyway, still sounding cool, but I just wanna let you know, it's pretty squashed. Let's keep listening.
Okay, dude, really great composition. I would like to hear this with vocals because um, right now it's not really a complete mix until you actually have vocals in here or at least a lead guitar that would take the place of vocals. But um, really cool riffing. Uh, I do hear some machine gun snare happening on that drum fill. The snare was clearly all one uh, dynamic. You're gonna wanna add some variation if you're using a sample or if you're utilizing program drums to vary up the snare drum just like an actual drummer would in reality. And again, super loud guitars. Maybe you're the guitar player. We tend to make our guitars way too loud in our productions. And I highly recommend comparing your mix to a pro mix so you could hear the, you know, the relationship between the snare drum and the rhythm guitar. So that's always what I like to listen to when referencing mix is the relationship between the uh, pokiness and the cuttiness of the snare versus the rhythm guitars. Now you asked in your email about slip editing and dude, your performances here sound pretty tight and they sound well edited. You do not need to make every single guitar pick attack one million percent on the grid. For me, I follow a simple rule of thumb. I just make sure my guitars are pocketed, meaning they're either dead on with the drums or maybe slightly behind, but never pushing the drums. That usually always doesn't sound that great. So in my opinion, what you're doing sounds pretty cool. Uh, slip editing in Reaper, doesn't matter if you're slip editing in Reaper or Cubase or any other DAW, it's really the same process. You're just dragging the transients to be pocketed. And if you wanna make your music sound very, very robotic and very gent-like, then you can make sure every single transient is perfect, but it's not really necessary. And it sounds like you have more of a hardcore thing going on here and more of like a classic kind of, you know, drop tune metal thing happening. So hopefully that answers your questions and thank you so much for your submission. All right, our next mix here comes from Mr. Joseph. Let's see what he sent. Again, another very lo-fi recording, but I kind of like it. Let's keep listening. What was that? I hear some clipping on the vocal. Got some clippies on the vocals there for a quick second. Okay, well, Joseph, um, I actually really dig the rawness of this. Clearly, this is more of a punky kind of thing, and that raw aesthetic works for this style of music. Um, now, if you're looking to clear up the mix, I know you said that you did not record this. You're, you were hired to mix it, from what I uh, understand. Now, the one thing you could do is try to get that vocalist a little more consistent with a little more compression. Now, if this were recorded live, which I believe you mentioned, there's gonna probably be room spill and a lot of drum bleed into the vocal mic, so you have to just compress him enough where the bleed is not killing the rest of your mix. But generally, if it was relatively well recorded, you won't notice too much of the bleed when the vocalist is mixed in with the rest of the production. Uh, I also don't hear much as far as cymbals. Uh, are concerned, so I would say definitely turn up your cymbals. Um, also, the panning on the guitars. Let me keep listening here. Project. Sounds like there's a lot of mono action on the guitars. You could hard pan your guitars a little more. Um, also, you can make, if you want a little more smack out of your snare, you could slap it a little harder with some compression. The snare sounds kind of flat, uh, but again, kind of cool, you know? Things like this are very subjective. You know, I've learned that there are people that like really raw recordings, like old school black metal, old school punk records, uh, old school hardcore albums that are very raw and visceral sounding. And then there are people, especially the younger generation, that if it doesn't sound like a computer spit it out, <laughs> they don't even want to listen to it. So I'm kind of refreshed by hearing this, to be completely honest with you. But those are the things that I would do to the mix to keep it nice and raw which you're kind of stuck with anyway, as far as the production is, uh, but to help clear it up just a little while retaining that raw aesthetic. So Joseph, hopefully that helps and uh, let me know how that works out for you. All right, our final mix here comes from Mr. Danny. Let's see what we got. 
Don't you know you could have had it all? Very nice, really like it. So, so far I'm getting kind of like an indie rock, almost Beatles-esque style production, and I really like it, man. I honestly wouldn't change much about this. It's got that nice warm retro vibe, which is not easy to pull off in the computer, which I'm assuming is where you're mixing. Uh, so great job with whatever saturation you're utilizing. Uh, you're utilizing. Let me also uh, listen to one last thing here. There's one thing I might want to mention. <laughs> I was gonna mention that the snare drum's a little subdued, but honestly, it works. If I had to pick on anything, maybe I wanna hear the snare drum a dB louder, if that, just so I could feel kind of the uh, uh, the two and four of the groove uh, a little more. Yeah, man, honestly, there's not much I would change about this. It's an indie, you know, retro sounding song, and what you have dialed in to me sounds really warm and, and, um, and pleasing to my ear, and it's something that I would actually listen to. So there you have it, that's my honest opinion. I would just like to shout out and thank everyone for submitting this killer group of mixes. If you're interested in submitting a mix to the channel, there are detailed instructions in this video's description that you could check out. And also, if you're looking to improve the sound of your productions where you're utilizing MIDI drums and amp sims without having to buy any new plugins or spending a bunch of money, you could have direct access to my MIDI drums and amp sims production checklist for absolutely free right now. There's a link below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload all weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. Till next time, happy mixing.